Hello, my name is Steven from 3D Printer Academy and in this video I'll show you everything you need to know to design basically 95% of the things you'll ever want to design using FreeCAD. So in this video we'll be going through this example project where you'll learn how to design a simple organizer for 3D printing. If you don't have FreeCAD already, go to FreeCAD.org. Big news, FreeCAD is now on version 1.0 beta. So in this video, I'll be using a FreeCAD version 1.0 release candidate build. Now it's better than ever before to learn FreeCAD. You may be familiar with the old logo. We now have the new 1.0 version of FreeCAD, which is easier to use than ever before. When you open FreeCAD for the first time, you'll see the start screen here. Go ahead and click on parametric part. So now here's the basic workspace where you'll be designing your objects. And by default, we have a body that's created, but you'll notice on the screen here, there is no object. That's because the body is empty. Also by default, the task panel here will be located on the bottom left. What I like to do is I like to move it over here to the right side. Just click and drag and move the task panel over to the right. So how exactly do we create a 3D object using FreeCAD? Well, right now we have a body, but it's empty. So like many other CAD programs, you create a 3D object based on a 2D sketch. So we need to create a sketch first. You'll find the sketch tool right here. And when you click on that, you'll see three planes appear. Basically, these are just 2D surfaces. So we have a flat one, that's basically the floor plane, and then two vertical planes. Go ahead and select on the XY plane, which is the floor plane. So now you'll see it automatically puts us into the Sketcher workbench here. So let's go ahead and start creating a sketch. You'll find all of these sketch tools up here on the top left. And for this example, the shape is basically a couple of rectangles. So we go ahead and find the rectangle tool right here, select it. Now when we hover over the origin point here, you'll notice these red constraints pop up. See the red X there? That means it'll automatically snap to that point. So go ahead and click and drag out like so. And now we can set the dimension. So I'll type in 42, tab, switch to the other dimension and 42, and then hit enter. So now we have our first square for the container, but we need to create some offset lines for the walls. Simply click and drag to select everything and go ahead and click on the offset tool right here. Now, when you move your mouse, you'll see an offset line and I'm going to type in a negative 1.5, enter, because I usually find that's a good thickness for 3D printed parts. So let's go ahead and create the next rectangle. This time I'll make it 36, press tab, 36, enter. And now let's go ahead and create the offset line for this as well. We could try to select it like so, and we'll see what happens here if it actually works. And it looks like it's working this time. So type in negative 1.5, enter. And now go ahead and click close here on the task panel. And we have our completed sketch. So after you finish a sketch, it'll automatically put you back into the part design workbench. And now I'll show you the most important tools in this workbench here. And I'll show you how they're organized. So the yellow tools here are all used to create 3D objects from sketches. You can kind of see the icons here. Right here, you see the red sketch here and a 3D rectangle uh, being created from that. And then we also have the blue and red tools, which are used to take away from 3D objects. So the most important tools you need to know in FreeCAD are the sketch tool here to create the 2D objects, the yellow tools here, which you use to create 3D objects from the 2D sketches, and the blue and red tools here, which are used to take away parts of the 3D object. So now let's go ahead and create the walls for our container. And we're going to use what's called the pad tool. And this is similar to an extrude tool in Blender or Fusion 360, if you've ever used those programs. So with the sketch fully selected, how do we know what part of the sketch will be extruded? Basically, it automatically detects closed loops. And I wish when you hovered over it, it highlighted the closed loop, but it doesn't, but that's okay. So if we go ahead and click on pad here, which is essentially the extrude tool, you'll see it creates a 3D object. And right here, you can set the length, or in this case is actually the height. Let's go ahead and set the height to 48 millimeters and click OK. So how do we move the view around? Because our part is kind of out of the main area here. Well, right now I could click shift in the middle mouse button to click and drag to pan, or just hold the middle mouse button to rotate. 
and you could change your settings down here. There's a bunch of presets for the view control settings here. I usually like to use either Blender or Touchpad since I'm using a MacBook Pro. Now, if we go ahead and rotate the view, you'll notice that our object doesn't have any base. Let's go ahead over to the left here to our tree and you see the body, our origin, we have the pad which created the 3D object. If we open the drop down for pad, we could turn on the sketch. And now if we hold a command or control and select all of these internal lines here, we now have two closed loops that we could use to extrude or use the pad tool to create the base. Let's go ahead and set the thickness to one millimeter. So already we've created our own custom container, but how can we modify it further? Maybe we don't want this side to be as tall as the other side. To lower just this portion of the object, we could go ahead and create a sketch on this top plane here. So select on this plane and go to the sketch tool. So right now we are just simply on the same plane as the top surface. However, we can't actually interact with any of the lines from the object below unless we use this tool right here. Go ahead and select on the Create External Geometry tool and select all of the lines that we want to be able to interact with. Once you've selected all the lines, go ahead and click Escape. And now let's go ahead and create the lines for our sketch. We'll use the Line tool here. And once again, we'll hover over the points so we can see the X constraint there, which is technically the coincident constraint. And we'll select that. Select this here, select this point, and basically select all of this top surface here, as well as the offset. Now that we have that, go ahead and click close. Let's go ahead and select our new sketch, and we'll use the pocket tool to cut away from our object. And you can see by default, it automatically cut it five millimeters. Let's go ahead and make it a little bit shorter and we'll set it to 10 millimeters. So our container is really looking great already, but let's go ahead and modify it some more. I'm going to rotate around to the back side like so, and I want to create a spot where maybe we could put some sort of uh, cutout for maybe a glue stick or pencil or something like that. Let's go ahead and create a sketch on this surface right here. Select the surface and go to the sketch tool and create the sketch. So once again, we'll need to use the create external geometry tool and we'll select on essentially all of the edges of this face. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and create the lines for the third compartment here. Go to the line tool and we'll select on at this point and let's go up 24 millimeters and 90 degrees. And on the other side, we'll do the same. We'll go up 24 and then we'll type in 90 and enter. Now let's go ahead and create one more line here on top. We'll connect these two points together and one more line actually on the bottom and to collect, connect these points together as well. So we have our completed closed loop. We go ahead and click close. And with the sketch selected, let's go ahead and extrude it. And let's extrude it out 18 millimeters. Now the last step is to create the holes for our container. So let's select this top surface here and once again you'll see the pattern. You select the plane, you create the sketch, and either add material or you remove it. So let's create the sketch here. And once again we want to use the Create External Geometry tool to copy these lines here, like so. And now let's dig a little bit deeper into sketches, specifically the constraints and how you could use them to make more precise sketches. So if I create a line, a random line here without connecting it to anything, without setting any dimension, the line is just floating on the plane. But we could actually use constraints to snap things together and to determine exactly what our sketch should look like. So if I select on this point here, and actually I'll need to create a line first right here from this point to this point. Now, if I select on this point and this line, I could use this constraint right here, which is the symmetric constraint, and it'll snap the point to the center of that line. It's kind of like the midpoint constraint in other programs. Now, if I select on this line here and this line here, we could use the parallel or perpendicular constraint to make the line perpendicular. 
And if we select the line and select here, we could add the dimension. And I'll go ahead and type in 12. Let's go ahead and create one more line. And once again, I'll set it to 12 and zero degrees. All right, we're almost done here. The last thing we need to do is create two circles where we'll cut out the holes. So let's go ahead and use the circle tool and we'll snap it to this point here. And let's just do, I don't know, maybe 10 millimeters for the first one. And for the second one, maybe it's a little bit smaller, we'll do eight millimeters. Go ahead and click close. Now let's select on just those two closed loops by holding command or control. And we'll use the pocket tool, not the whole tool. You don't wanna use the whole tool, that's for, um, it's more of automatic and you don't really need to use that. But the pocket tool is the one that you want to use most of the time. So now let's go ahead and set the depth to 23. So it should go all the way down to the bottom but not all the way through. It should be one millimeter thick on the bottom and click OK. Now the last thing we could do is add a few finishing touches just to make it a little bit more polished. Let's go ahead and round some corners. If we select on this edge and this edge, we could use the fillet tool right here to round the corners. And let's go ahead and set it to five. So we have some nice rounded corners for this portion. And maybe we want the inside to also have some rounded corners. So let's select on that edge and basically select all of the internal edges here. Once again, go up to the fillet tool. And once again, let's set the radius to five to keep everything consistent. So there we have it, our completed custom organizer. But how do we export it for 3D printing? Go ahead and select on the body and go up to file, export, and then export it as an STL file for 3D printing. My name is Steven from 3D Printer Academy, and if you found this video helpful, please consider supporting 3D Printer Academy on Patreon. Patrons like you help make free videos like this possible. You can support by clicking the link in the description below. My name is Steven, thanks again, and happy printing.